It's been four years since Genshin's release, and almost four years of me maining Traveler. With Genshin's anniversary here, I thought it would be a good time to do some Traveler shenanigans. I've also self-proclaimed this month to be the month of the Traveler, so I plan on making a video each week leading up to Pyro MC's release with every Traveler elemental type, and exploring every facet of their kit with the final one being Pyro MC. So, without further ado, let's start with the kit I've explored the most. GOMC. I personally think that GOMC's main DPS playstyle is the hardest to master in the game. This is due to a variety of factors, but to understand this, you need to know how their kit works. In order to deal a significant amount of damage with GOMC, it's important to build up her skill and burst damage. GOMC's skill spawns a boulder on field, dealing damage to enemies nearby the spawn area. This boulder counts as a Geo construct. With the two active, one can essentially double this damage, and given its large multiplier, the double up on damage is quite significant. GOMC's burst deals up to four shockwaves within a large area, spawning four Geo walls upon the burst's completion. These walls also count as Geo constructs, and C1 allows for any unit within the area of the burst to gain 10% crit rate and interruption resistance. Now, let's talk about some basic mechanics for GOMC. First, if you want to release GOMC's skill as fast as possible, you ideally want to hold the skill button for a bit. This releases the skill faster than if you were to simply tap the skill button. It also allows you to somewhat aim the skill, avoiding an issue that many players have with GOMC's kit, trapping enemies on top of the boulder. GOMC's skill is also one of the few skills that can actually snapshot buffs. If you were standing in Bennett's burst and you placed a boulder on the field, the boulder's damage when it explodes will still be buffed by Bennett's burst, regardless if it's on the field or not. Though, so, note that it won't do the same amount of damage if Zhongli's shield isn't up, since resistant treads are enemy debuffs and not ally buffs. Another common misconception is the idea that GOMC C6 is a downgrade to their kit. In fact, I have heard many a YouTuber state that this is the contender for the worst constellation in the game. Frankly, this is simply untrue, and this constellation actually gives a great deal of flexibility. If you didn't know, there is a cap on how many Geo Constructs can be on the field, with a maximum of 3. When going over this limit, the earliest placed construct gets removed, and in Geo MC's case, does damage. The extended duration of C6 allows you to have more time to properly detonate boulders. But, Cars, didn't you say the limit for Geo Constructs was 3? How can GOMC's burst spawn four Geo Constructs and keep all of them? Well, you see, these walls don't count towards the Construct cap. This is why Zhongli is such a good teammate for GOMC, allowing you to get five shockwaves to hit a single enemy with a C0 Zhongli Pillar Resonance. However, in order to utilize this to its max effect, positioning is incredibly important. And this brings me to discuss how Genjin's hitbox system works. And so, for your fun fact of the day, did you know that boss enemies in Genshin have three different types of hitboxes? Most players are accustomed with two of them being the damage hitbox and the collisional hitbox. However, for static constructs, like GOMC's boulder, there exists a third type of hitbox, the construct hitbox. This particular type of hitbox dictates where these static constructs can be placed without immediately being destroyed. Most enemies don't have this, However, this isn't the same for boss enemies, since if you place a construct too close, it will be automatically destroyed. The craziest part is that these three hitboxes don't have to cover the same volume. This can be seen with Maku Kenki. If you place GOMC's boulder right under the boss, it gets destroyed and deals damage. But if you place it slightly away from the boss, you can not only deal damage, but also spawn the boulder, indicating that these hitboxes occupy different volumes. To be completely transparent, it is also possible for GOMC's boulder to have a different construct and damage hitbox rather than bosses. However, given the random amount of bugs I have seen regarding static constructs, I rather believe the bosses have different hitbox volumes than the boulder itself. I have my suspicions on why these hitboxes are different, but the main note of importance is that they are different. It means that it is possible to place GOMC's boulder and deal damage at the same time. In terms of optimizing placement, you want to place the boulder at the very edge of the boss's damage hitbox, while also being outside its construct hitbox. As for the more macro placement, what I like to do is a square-like formation, with a hole for me to place my next construct in, and surround the enemy with two boulders and one pillar from Zhongli. Basically, you always want to show the enemy the maximum amount of disrespect by killing them with a dong right in front of their face, call it the Genshin form of teabag. 
Unfortunately, this means your placement options are entirely dependent on the enemy you're facing, and so as a result, anytime a new boss is released, you'll need to practice where to place the boulder. As if the last few minutes weren't niche enough, here's some more niche knowledge to consume. UMC is actually able to proc the full effect of the weapon, Mist Splitter. By utilizing their entire normal attack string and proccing the last hit effect, which deals Geo damage, this activates the normal attack stack on Mist Splitter, allowing you to get the maximum damage bonus from the weapon. UMC-C1 doesn't apply to the burst, since the burst snapshots the character's stats before C1 gets a chance to activate, so you don't get the extra 10% crit rate or interruption resistance. And finally, you can also conduct some parkour on these boulders and do a punch attack, a technique referred to as Star Step. When you get extremely proficient at, at Star Stepping, you'll be able to eventually climb boulders without ever triggering the climbing animation. It's actually pretty cool. Another thing too is that GOMC's boulder model and hitbox aren't perfectly circular, which means on some sides, it's actually easier to use the Star Step technique I mentioned earlier. There's also another variant of the technique known as Rock Step, but I find that to be less useful generally since you'll want to tap the skill button to do this technique rather than hold it, so generally it's worse off. Whew, that was a lot. Don't worry, future Traveler videos won't have this much info, mainly because there isn't as much to consider for them in comparison to GOMC. But now we are finally on team building. Uh, as of currently recording this video, Zhongli is still by far the best partner for GOMC. The synergy with Zhongli's Pillar and GOMC's Boulder is way too good to pass up in my opinion. I know there's a future character releasing that may Love take this spot, but for a little while longer it's still Zhongli. They may also be released by the time you're watching this video or when this video is actually released, so there's that. As for the other two slots, the maximum DPS comes from utilizing Shenling and Bennett. Who knew? Shenling and Bennett everyone. Ooh. I have used other variants before, like this one, which I named Avalanche, however, it isn't nearly as strong as Double Pyro, Double Geo, and I've used the Avalanche comp a lot in previous videos, so I thought I would mix it up a little. As for artifacts, I don't think it comes up as a surprise that the best set for GOMC right now is the same thing as Navia's best in slot set for general team comp. There may be situations where Lava Walker ends up being better, though that'll depend on how much attack your Ben is giving and whether or not 18% attack is worth less than 5% bonus damage. However, I don't use the best in slot set. Why? Because the pieces I've currently acquired are so good, it's really difficult to farm a 4 piece set to be better than it. In fact, they are so good, when I sort by travelers on Akasha CB, which is an artifact ranking site if you did not know about it, if I look for travelers with a Geo Damage Cup and 2 piece Petra specifically, I'm in the top 5. So yeah! It's really hard for me to improve my pieces further, and I'd rather just spend that resin to upgrade other units. So I just run a 2 piece Petra, 2 piece Noblesse on my Traveler. For GOMC, and this is generally true for other Traveler elements if you're trying to make them a DPS, Primordial Jade Cutter, Mist Splitter, and Huron are your overall best 5 star options for a DPS build. Overall, Miss Splitter gives you the highest cap, in my opinion, but it's harder to get the necessary artifacts to make it work, so BJC and Haran are easier to use as a result. I personally use Miss Splitter here, though I should really activate Bennett C6 if I want to get max value out of it more easily, maybe in a future Traveler video. If you want 4 star or lower options though, Black Sword, Lion's Roar, Arbiter of Dawn, and Fab Sword are all decent options. Now, the majority of the guide, if you can even call this a guide, <laughs> is out of the way. During the process of making this video, uh, it made me reminisce about how this entire channel started. If you have been watching my channel from the start, you'll know that most of the things I did were Geo Traveler related. My interest in Genshin Impact stemmed largely from that character's kit, due to how unique it was. And, well, over time I have drifted away from using GOMC directly in my videos, mainly because, oh, I was trying to highlight other characters. But I think that will change, and it all starts here. So, time to introduce 5.0 Spiral Abyss to, uh, Rock and Stone.
as always, here are the builds I used. From what I mentioned earlier, I plan on using every Traveler's Kit to their max, so expect another Traveler video next week. And better yet, all you viewers get to choose who I do next. There is a survey in my community tab, so vote for the one you want to see me do next. So I have one request, please, of God, do not make it. Hydro, Traveler, like seriously, please, no amount of tech is going to make this kit usable. Please!